For those of you that have been following along very closely about the development of low-level APIs like Mantle, DirectX 12, and Vulkan, the name Nitrous Engine will probably ring a bell for you. This was one of the uh, initial entries or engines that uh, AMD started to use to tout the benefits and power of Mantle. It was uh, brought forth by Oxide uh, as the name of the game developer. Stardock is the name of the company that's putting out games based on that engine. Uh, it was named, it was used for, or will be used for real-time strategy games. And we finally have our first hands-on look in testing, not seeing somebody else's testing, using our own testing with the Nitrous Engine in the form of Ashes of the Singularity, an upcoming real-time strategy game coming out, I think later this year, uh, utilizing the Nitrous Engine that supports uh, DirectX 11, DirectX 12, and I think Mantle, although in reality uh, we're really just focusing on DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. Now you guys may know that we did a video and an article that looked at the FutureMark 3DMark API overhead test. That was an interesting look at things, but it was very theoretical very much just a here's a benchmark low visual uh, fidelity not a whole lot of real world information you can take away from it more theoretical peak throughputs of the api ashes of the singularity is an actual game the nitrous engine is an actual engine that's going to be released at least on this title maybe others as well and the guys at uh, at Oxide have been very much behind the development of these low-level APIs, including Mantle slash Vulkan and DirectX 12. We were able to get our hands on it uh, a few days ago and able to run some testing through it. Uh, what you'll see in the benchmark itself is that um, it is a, a massive scale RTS. Hundreds of units are on screen. Uh, they say it can scale even beyond that. Uh, the benchmark itself, or we'll play some video of, of it for you, runs through many scenes, some of them far zoomed far out, some of them zoomed very closely in, and then we see a, a drastic range in kind of what the uh, impact is on the CPU and the GPU, depending on those scenes. But again, they're trying to emulate some kind of real world experience, what the user might actually do, and how they play the game when it is released. Now a couple of things uh, about the benchmark itself. There's already some controversy surrounding it. NVIDIA has put out documentation to press and to media claiming that it's not representative of real DX12 per performance. I don't agree with that statement. Um, the idea that it doesn't represent real DX12 performance would insinuate that it's not going to be in a shipping game. It is absolutely going to be in a shipping game and thus it represents DX12 performance. Um, I think we can kind of brush that off to the side. Obviously, you, you kind of know then which one of these vendors is going to look more positively after we show you some of the results. Uh, but it is, it's interesting that there's, there's always this debate between AMD and NVIDIA about which games show which uh, features and technologies better than others and vice versa. Uh, I, I, I've been working with the Oxide guys for a long time on um, how to present this information, how to get it out there. Uh, re using the media to kind of showcase it. Uh, and I think that they've done a very good job of presenting data and presenting users when you guys get a hold of it, as well as the media, with a ton of data points that then you can pick and choose which ones you want to focus on or look at or how you analyze it. For example, they output uh, log files that have every single frame time included as well as uh, CPU frame time, GPU frame time, and all those divisions therein. And it will allow, allow us in the future when we have more time to spend with it to do some very detailed analysis of uh, how much time is being spent by the CPU, how much time is being spent by the GPU, uh, how those are affected by different driver revisions on the GPU side or different CPU hardware uh, in that regard. And it will be very interesting. So far today, we have a little bit more simplistic and I think more of an overview of the performance to present, but I still think it's, it's incredibly useful. So the uh, other thing we need to know before we dive into the results is that the benchmark is divided into three kind of categories of scenes in the game. Uh, one is normal, one is medium, and one is heavy. And those indicate the batch counts, otherwise known as draw call counts. So a scene that has less than 10,000 draw calls per second tends to be a normal scene. Uh, 10 to 20,000 draw calls is a medium, and anything over 20,000 or so is considered a heavy seen in terms of the impact it will have on CPU and draw call capability. So in our story, if you go to PCPro.com, which is always going to be a ton more detail in the story rather than what we present in the video as we try to truncate it some, is uh, uh, two sets of data. One is the average 
the average frame rates, uh, the average frame times that are presented that average the normal, medium, and heavy benchmark results, um, and others that another set that really just focuses on the heavy results, right? Because those are the ones that are more interesting when you're just focusing on DirectX 12 performance and how it benefits over DirectX 11 in terms of draw call capability for games like Ashes of the Singularity. So let's go ahead and jump into some of the results. We tested five processors, two graphics cards, two resolutions, and two presets at each of those resolutions in addition to the both APIs, DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. So a ton of data uh, was gathered and, and, and is presented to you here. We have the Core i7-5960X, which is like the pinnacle high-end consumer 8-core 16-thread processor. We have the Core i7-6700K, the brand new Skylake quad-core 8-thread processor. We have the Core i3-4330, which is a 2-core 4-thread CPU, much less expensive. And on the AMD side, we use the AMD FX8370, which is an 8-core part, 8-core 4 module part. Uh, and then the FX6300, which is a 6-core three module part that I know is very popular for, for users with low cost builds as well. And uh, as far as GPUs, we use the GTX 980 and the Radeon R9 390X. We only use two GPUs for now because we kind of wanted to focus on the CPU side. That's really where the DirectX 12 primary benefits show up. But as you'll see on the GPU side, uh, we actually got some pretty interesting results. Enough of the build up to it, let's actually talk about what we saw. Uh, a high level overview is that we saw two things that stood out using the Ashes of the Singularity benchmark. One is that if you look at the DirectX 11 code path, the NVIDIA drivers are a mile ahead of what the AMD drivers do for the DirectX 11 benchmarks. If you look through some of those scores, right, all these graphs are going to show you DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 on the same thing. And if you take, for example, the 5960X results, you will see that the DX11 scores for the GTX 980 are 40, 50, 60% faster in frames per second than the DirectX 11 results for the Radeon R9 390X. Now that happens pretty much across the board. The NVIDIA DirectX 11 drivers are faster with the fastest end processors as well as the mid-range processors and the budget processors, although it does shrink down a little bit. This tells us that you know, all those uh, months ago when NVIDIA was telling us about how much more efficient DirectX, their DirectX 11 code is, uh, it, that's actually validated by this benchmark, right? This, this benchmark very much heavily focuses on CPU and API throughput, right? That's kind of the focus here. And we see uh, in, in many cases, especially if you look at just the heavy results from the Ashes of the Singularity test, you'll see... 90, 80, 90% performance difference between what the GTX 980 can do and what the Radeon R9 390X can do. Now, obviously, what's interesting here is DirectX 12 results. And what you'll find out actually is that the scores, the actual in frames per second scores or frame time scores, depending on how you want to look at the data, the GTX 980 and the R9 390X actually perform very closely. Uh, there are several instances where the R9 390X is a little bit faster, you know, 5, 6, 8, 10% faster than the GTX 980. And that's actually interesting because the GTX 980 is a $60 to $80 more expensive graphics card based on today's prices. So that's interesting. What's maybe more interesting is how those scores came to be. If you look at the NVIDIA results for the very high-end processors 5960X, 6700K, you'll notice there's very little change in performance and sometimes a regression in performance going from DirectX 11 to DirectX 12. Uh, with AMD, that is definitely not the case. You're with AMD on the 5960X, we see improvements of 80% at 1080p and 64% at 1600p, at 2560 by 1600. Now that tells us a couple of things. One, that the DirectX 11 base score for AMD's GPUs were way too low, right, in, in terms of comparing it to NVIDIA. But because of the advantages of DirectX 12 and the work that the Oxide team has done on the Nitrous engine, they get it this huge boost up uh, in performance, right, 80%. And, and as, as a result, they get to match the performance of the NVIDIA hardware. Uh, if you look at a mid-range processor like the Core i3-4330, for example, uh, NVIDIA does see some improvement going from DX11 to DX12, but we're talking about 10 to 12% or so. A modest boost, but there's something there. AMD sees a 40 or 42% 
increase in performance going from DX11 to DX12. As a result, the DX12 scores, the kind of the end result of what we plan to see when the Ashes of the Singularity game ships, is that both of those cards are performing very similarly, despite the fact that NVIDIA had a very large lead under the DirectX 11 code path. Very similar results with the AMD processors, the 8370 and the 6300. Um, you know, 13 to 18% gain for NVIDIA, 47 to 45% gain for AMD. The result is very even performance between those two parts. Now that's on the average. If we look at the heavy scores, which focus on the scenes that are very compute intense, have a lot of draw calls, which is where the advantage of DirectX 12 lies, you will see that NVIDIA's scaling, as well as AMD scaling, actually goes up a bit, but the end result is still the same. The DirectX 12 scores tend to be a, pretty close to even between the 980 and the 390X, with the small edge going to AMD's hardware, but instead what you're seeing is, you know, AMD is as much as 2.2X as fast on the 5960X under DirectX 12 than it is DirectX 11. That's a huge increase. Uh, NVIDIA's increase is, you know, it goes up to maybe 25, 30% or so, as opposed to the 11% differences they had on other presets. So everybody gets a boost when you focus on the heavy, high draw call count results, uh, but it seems to be fairly consistent across the board. So I don't see any um, detriment to really utilizing the average results because, again, that is going to be more of a real world experience for people as they play this game. So what is the takeaway from all of this? You know, there's a couple of things. One is that um, NVIDIA's improvement from DirectX 11 to DirectX 12 is significantly lower than what AMD's is. Uh, on these particular cards, obviously we haven't tested a whole range of GPUs. That's something else we, we plan to do in the future. Um, which is, which is good news for AMD. AMD uh, is going to be able to take advantage of that move to DirectX 12 on this game and others coming out in the future and hopefully be able to capitalize on it and gain some performance in areas where they maybe had been lacking. The second thing to take away is that in current games, which there's a ton of DirectX 11 titles out there, the NVIDIA driver architecture just seems to be better in terms of API management and CPU uh, multi-threading capability. If you look at the DirectX 11 results, again, in a benchmark and a game engine that are built specifically to stress test API throughput, right? the engine is built in a way to try to maximize that for actual gameplay experiences, the NVIDIA advantages under, under DirectX 11 are pretty substantial and, and, and noteworthy there. Um, does this mean that the GTX 980 and the R9 390X are equal in performance going forward? I don't think so. In this particular game, if it were released today, I, obviously that seems to be the case, uh, everything else being equal under DirectX 12, but we don't know what other games are going to uh, happen or what they're going to showcase, right? So DirectX 12 has other capabilities and features and performance benefits that don't focus so heavily on API overhead and draw calls, something like the Microsoft Fable release that will be, I don't know, later this fall, I guess, um, may show something different. But for now, this is our first real-world example of DirectX 12 implementation in a game engine that will ship on a game, and this is supposed to emulate you know, what the end-user experience differences will be, and the results, I think, are, are pretty impressive, uh, especially for AMD's sake, but I think overall, just in general, the change from DX11 to DX12 shows some significant gains. So I'm very curious to know what you guys think. You can leave us a comment on the video here. Uh, you, make sure you go to PCPro.com and read the whole story. We have tons of benchmarks. We have the graphs presented by processor. We have the graphs presented by graphics cards. You can kind of see how everything scales. And then we'll show you a comparison of how the 980 and uh, R9 390X kind of compare to each other as you change the API as well. There's a lot more data than I think uh, we wanted to present here in uh, a, a somewhat quick form YouTube video, but we really appreciate if you guys would go there and check it out. For now, that's all we have for you today, but ex uh, expect more testing on the Ashes of the Singularity test as well as DirectX 12 coming up in the not-too-distant future. Thanks, guys.